Hi, my name is Jeff Bishop, and I am a youth leader at New Minus Baptist Church. Oh, I'm no longer a youth leader at New Minus Baptist Church. But I wish I was, and nonetheless, I've been asked to share with you today about the Great Flood, as described in Genesis 8, 1 and 9 to 17. See, the story of Noah and the Flood is one of those biblical narratives that we are so familiar with that we think we know the whole story. But as I began to research this a bit further, I discovered two broad interpretations of the significance of the flood story. The first one, the most common interpretation, is very much a children's story of animals and rainbows. This is a story about God's love for animals, about remembering God's love each time we see a rainbow, even about the bright side of every storm. How nice. The second common interpretation, however, could be rated for mature audiences. In this interpretation, God is so angered by human rebellion that God floods the whole earth, wiping out nearly everything in its path in a, a fit of divine rage. It may leave you questioning, why would you even want to associate yourself with a God that is willing to wipe out creation in a moment's notice, or at least within 40 days? Neither of these stories, of course, is the whole story. A truer story is that God desires to extend his grace to us and creation by calling us back to the harmony in which he first intended. So let's take a look at what's happening at the beginning of chapter 8 in Genesis. The great flood at this point is retreating. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days, and God remembered Noah and his family and the animals and put them all on the ark. The waters receded, and the ark came to rest in what we now call eastern Turkey on Mount Ararat. After sending out a raven, Noah sent out a dove to see if there was dry ground, but it came back having found nowhere to rest its wings. After seven days, Noah sent it back out, and guess what? It came back with a fresh olive leaf in its mouth, and Noah knew the ground was drying. Then Noah leaves the ark, and God told Noah, Come out of the ark and bring the animals with you, so they can be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So Noah and his family came out with all the animals. And perhaps the most important part of the story, in my very unprofessional opinion, God's promise not to flood the earth again, this covenant. And it says that Noah built an altar and offered burnt offerings to the Lord on it. And God said, never again will I curse the ground because of man or send a flood to destroy all living things, even though mankind's heart is evil from childhood. And God blessed Noah and his family saying, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. God reiterates this again in Genesis 9, verse 12, stating, The rainbow, the rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. So what is the significance of the rainbow then? It's a sign of God's covenant. According to the commentators and experts, because I'm certainly not one, first, the covenant of the rainbow is between God and man and the animals that were with Noah on the ark. A promise that there would never be such an event again that would destroy all flesh on the land. Of course, there have been lots of floods since then, most recently about a kilometer away from where I am here in Fort Mac. But this is obviously a promise where there would be never, never again a global flood to destroy all living things. Thankfully, here... No one was killed by the flood. Secondly, the rainbow is a covenant of grace. It is actually a symbol of Jesus Christ himself. Just as Noah and his family had to go through the door to be saved, door of the ark, that is, so others could have gone through that door to be saved. In other words, Noah's ark is actually a picture of salvation in Christ, as he is the door through which we need to go to to be saved for eternity. Just like John 10, 9 states, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. What a beautiful picture of God's grace and foreshadowing of what we get to experience today in our own lifetime. What stood out for me is that, yes, there are consequences for what we do in this life, but God is always willing to accept us where we're at. For me, this is the biggest draw to Christianity, and it's beautifully presented through the grace of God in this covenant to Noah and the rest of creation. No matter what we've done, no matter what kind of ridiculous situation we find ourselves in, even if we're at rock bottom, Christ still says, walk through the door and be saved. Speaking of doors, did you know that the door of the ark was actually left open for seven days after it was built? God still wanted to give humanity a chance to be saved before it was too late. 
just like those at the time of Noah had a chance to be saved through God's grace, so do you today through the new covenant of Christ. If you're listening to this right now, then it's not too late, and your life can be turned around for better by faith in God that believes in second, third, fourth, six chances, and more. Yes, rainbows are a beautiful reminder of this promise by God way back then and a reminder that God is still willing to accept us as we are today in this moment. It's fun to think of rainbows as they're expressed in uh, our culture, popular culture today, as a place where we can search for gold or act as a bridge to a better place. Think of the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Beautiful. Uh, But if I can be honest with you, I like to use... uh, the rainbow as a God, as a reminder of God's promise that he's extending his grace to all of us, all of creation, and to make things right with this plan for our lives. I'm going to pray a quick prayer, and then I'll say goodbye. God, we thank you for who you are and for what you've done for us. Thank you for your abundance of grace that you extend to us on a daily basis, even though we may feel we're not worthy. If there are people listening to this that need that grace, please give them the courage to cry out to you and accept your invitation of unconditional love in the gift of eternal life. We pray for those who are struggling in one way or another because of COVID-19 today especially, that you give them a sense of peace and knowing that you are there to walk us through this difficult time. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, it's been great to connect with you this way. It's been fun. And I wish I could uh, be with you all in person. And uh, God willing, uh, we'll, be de- we'll be together in person again uh, in the not-too-distant future. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.